back in 2018, I was at an academic event and having a conversation with a guy who then told me, when I asked him what he did, he said, well, I'm using genetic information to predict social outcomes. And I was like, I'm sorry, fucking what? And it took him quite a while to explain this to me. But what he basically revealed is that he was working on a way to use DNA to predict things like whether a kid might graduate from a four-year university, whether they would be addicted to cigarettes later in life, whether they might turn out to be LGBTQ. And he was combining the statistical analysis of economics, he was an economist, with genetic information and was partnered up with geneticists. And together they were working on a thing that they were referring to as genoeconomics. That ability to try and score one's chances of these social outcomes coming to pass came to be known as polygenic scoring. And I wrote a piece for the New York Times Magazine about it in 2018. I, at the time, thought, you know, that this was some really scary fringe stuff that was going to probably be a real problem once it commercialized. And now, thanks to new reporting that just dropped from the Wall Street Journal, I'm realizing just how commercialized it has become. So, my piece back in the New York Times Magazine was called, the, I think it was called, The Geno Economists Say DNA Can Predict Your Chances of Success. Well, a new, study, a new story is out from the Wall Street Journal called Genetically Engineered Babies Are Banned. Tech Titans Are Trying to Make One Anyway. And it's a profile of a company called Preventive that is uh, a, it's funded by, in part, Sam Altman and his husband and the CEO of Coinbase, a guy named Brian Armstrong. Now, back when I was writing this 2018 piece, you know, these ethicists and so forth would come out of the woodwork and say, well, this is obviously going to lead to a kind of Gattaca possibility because the, the, the application here is if you're a, a family doing IVF and you have a certain number of eggs that you can choose among in terms of which one to fertilize, what you can do using polygenic scores is look at each one and say, oh, this one has a, high, a greater chance of being addicted to cigarettes or this one has a greater chance of graduating from college. And the percentages are small, typically single-digit percentages, but they are predictive, although clinicians have shown that in some cases it's really not at all possible to, for instance, like avoid disease this way. But clearly someone was going to start paying for this, and already they have. There are all sorts of companies, there's a bunch of them now, that are offering polygenic scoring for thousands of dollars to, com to, to couples that want to do it. And at the time, geneticists were talking about this, you know, and saying, I had one guy at, at UC San Diego saying to me, well, clearly this is Gattaca, the, the you know, the, the 1997 movie about a dystopian future in which the rich can genetically engineer themselves and the poor cannot and are, as a result, you know, segregated forever. Well, in April, I mean, this is the thing is that these, these folks are, are the, the tech people involved in this stuff clearly are ideologically motivated here to try to kind of improve on humanity, right? To upgrade the software. And in April, Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, wrote on X that he envisioned, quote, the IVF clinic of the future powered by a, and I'm not kidding here, this is what he says, a, quote, Gattaca stack of technologies combining embryo editing and genetic screening. Together, he wrote, this is from the, time, from the Wall Street Journal, together he wrote the technologies could, quote, start to accelerate evolution. You know, the, the, I, I went to a, a gathering, uh, I think this was like 2020, maybe, 2019, right after the, the piece had come out. I was invited to a big gathering at USC of the folks at the top minds in this stuff. And, you know, what they had sort of proven is that this can work, like they, that it can be predictive. But what I said to them is, that doesn't mean you should keep doing this, because clearly the market's going to get a hold of this, and a Gattaca kind of future is really, really could be there. And isn't it your responsibility, I asked them, to maybe head this off, you know, just because you can do this, should you do this? And I remember getting really yelled at, you know, people really outraged saying, well, we're scientists, we have to follow where the discovery leads us. And, you know, now we're in this world in which we really are seeing the commercial application of this stuff. Now, they say these companies, the one that, for instance, is, is being profiled in this journal article is called Preventive, backed by Altman, backed by uh, Armstrong. Uh, and that company is ostensibly there to try and eradicate certain genetic diseases. The Wall Street Journal reports that one couple has even volunteered to basically be the first baby edited in embryo 
to avoid this disease. Now, the CEO of the, of the company, Preventive, says that that's not true. He says, quote, we are not trying to rush things. But it is absolutely the case that you have companies offering up polygenic scoring. That is a, a, a totally stand thing, a you know, standard thing. Here's what the journal says. A handful are already selling these services, backed by investors such as Armstrong, venture capitalist Peter Thiel, and Reddit co-founder and venture capitalist Alexis Ohanian. If you're not familiar, Peter Thiel has all sorts of views about the improvement of the human race and whether humans really in their current form should even survive. It looks, uh, according to the journal, um, both, uh, uh, you know, it has become a standard thing among prominent members of the Silicon Valley elite, including Altman and Elon Musk, to use polygenic screening to evaluate their embryos. Uh, Musk, according to the journal, used Orchid to select embryos for two children he had with Siobhan Zillis, an executive at his brain-computer interface company Neuralink. This is according to people briefed on the matter. And uh, the, the you know, uh, another company like this, Herosite, says it counts well-known billionaires among its 80 initial customers. And, uh, you know, the, the, the spokespeople for this stuff truly are, are talking about producing future people who thrive, in the words of, of one person. I mean, these are people really talking about voluntary eugenics. At one presentation, uh, uh, there was a, a, this guy whose name is Jonathan Anomaly. He's from this company, Herosite. He literally says uh, at this thing that um, there could be a marked difference in intelligence between the, quote, genetically enhanced and the genetically unenhanced. And he said that someday those who choose embryos for higher intelligence might pity those who leave their children unenhanced. Quote, there is going to be inequality. This is a totally new realm. And I'd like to point out that while genetically engineering babies is not yet, is not allowed, it is, uh, you know, things like choosing for eye color, skin color, those things are not regulated. And when people do that kind of choosing, they're not choosing for brown eyes, you know, they're not screening for dark hair. That is the thing. And so I, I just, you know, I have this whole thing I've been following around, I've been, I've been thinking about around great ideas we should not pursue. And this is one of the classics for me. Um, you know, the, the incredible uh, uh, leaping ahead of not just what the technology could do, because according to like the director of the Innovative Genetics, Genomics Institute at the University of California, Berkeley, who's quoted here in the journal PC says, quote, these people are not working on genetic diseases. They are either lying, delusional, or both. These people armed with very poorly deployed sacks of cash are working on baby improvement. This stuff is really happening. It's really happening now. And this illusion I think we're under that because you can do a thing, you should do a thing. I just think it's really, it's got us in its grip right now. Mm -hmm.